All righty, so we're looking at roughly another 20 problems, second half semester problems. So let's have at it. I'm going to try to keep the lecturing down to a minimum. Again, each problem, you feel free to pause the video, uh, give it a try, or simply watch. You know, first stage of learning is following, so you're free to just watch. Or if you think you're starting to recognize what to do with the problem, give it a go. All right, so we're going to start with the domain of this function, log x minus 2 over 10 minus x. And we're going to use, let me put it right in front of us here, log x minus 2. That's a common log. It's understood to be a base 10. But we don't write it. And we're dividing by the square root of 10 minus x. So let's look at the critical numbers. The critical numbers are 2. Uh, let's get that one to be 10. And 2. All right. 3 is not critical in this problem. It might become critical if this was in the denominator. But it's not critical now because log 1 is 0. Right? So we're making zeros. Those are what we're using as critical numbers here. So can I use numbers bigger than 10? No. Right? The denominator and the square root of 10 minus 11, for instance. I can't use that because that's not going to show up on the coordinate system, Cartesian coordinate system. Can I use the number 10? No. No, because I can't divide by the square root of 0. I can't divide by 0. Can I use numbers between 2 and 10? No. Putting an 8 in here, nothing wrong with the denominator. Yeah, I can find out the exponent that you put on top of 10 to get a 6. So, yeah, this is going to work. And can I use the number 2? No. Can't use the number 2 because x minus 2 has to be bigger than 0. And these numbers are not bigger than 0 when I put 2 in. So the only thing that works is 2 to 10. So I would write it x less than 10 but greater than 2. So that's the domain of this calculation. All right, now I want to graph this polynomial. I want to graph 5x, x minus 2 cubed, uh, x plus 4 squared. And I'm going to allow the graph to tell me when my y values are less than 0. All right, so what are the critical numbers? 0, 2, and negative 4. And if you'll notice, I have dashes and dots to indicate there is a sign change or there is not a sign change. If I put a million in, million in here, million in here, million in here, I think I'm getting a very big answer out. All right, and I'm going to get a sign change at 2, but it's going to look like a cubic root. So it's, it's going to look like that. Uh, and then at 0, I get a linear root. And then at negative 4, no sign change. So that's the general shape of this graph. And I want to know when I'm less than 0. Well, these numbers aren't less than 0. And nor are these. So it only looks like I'm between 0 and 2. So x is less than 2, but greater than 0. Here's another practice. Got to get your reps in. x squared minus 4 over x plus 10. Now, we're not going to graph this one. Right? But we are going to use a sign chart. Right? And what are the critical numbers? Well, this is where you're going to have to factor x squared minus 4, x plus 2, x minus 2. So there are three critical numbers, negative 2, positive 2, and negative 10. All right? And so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 intervals to check out. And each of these terms right, have exponents that are odd. So we're going to get sign changes, x minus 2 changes signs at 2, x uh, plus 2, x plus 2 changes signs at negative 2, it's a linear function, x plus 10, same thing, at negative 10, negative 10, we get sign changes, and anytime you change a sign, right, for instance, well, I said I wouldn't lecture, so I won't, so if I put a big number in, the bigger, the bigger, the bigger, I'm sorry, but it's going to be positive, and that's not less than zero. So it's going to alternate. You can take turns, time, putting numbers in, checking that out. So what works? I can't use negative 10. 
right? Because I can't divide by zero. Otherwise, this works. So what do I have? I have negative infinity. That's a terrible negative infinity sign. To negative 10, and negative 10 does not work, so it's a parentheses. But negative 2 to 2 does work. So union bracket negative 2 to 2. And I hope that I didn't make any mistakes with that because I'm talking and not thinking about the problems enough. Okay, but I believe that should be true. Okay. And let's see what we have on the other side over there. Clean this board up. Uh, sketch. Okay, this is one of our major topics. We haven't talked about it much, but we're beginning the conversation. I started that conversation with you the other day. And now let's continue talking about it. So what did we say these fractions, these calculations are? They're fractions. And what can fractions be? They can be positive. They can be negative. They can be zero. Or they can be undefined. I should write undefined instead of using that symbol. They can be undefined. And this fraction is going to be all of these things. What else can we say about fractions? They can be big or small. They can be big or small. What's a small fraction? Well, that's something like 2 over 1,095. Well, 10,095. That's a small fraction. What's a big fraction? Well, that could be 2 divided by point, oh, 1. That could be really big. Okay, and they could be positive or negative, right? All right, so what do we have? Let's go for the critical numbers here. Let's get a graph. I can see the uh, x value of a half. Huh. I really want to do that. I'll call this a. I'll call that a half. All right. So if I put a half in, I get um, you know zero over what? Fourteen. Well, that's zero. So my x-intercepts come from the numerator. X-intercepts one half zero. Y-intercept always plug in zero. We did that all last half of the semester, so minus a third. So zero gets us minus one third. This is all local behavior. End behavior. End behavior is when you do things like throw a hundred. Right? What happens when I put a hundred in here? I get 800 minus four over 400 plus 12. And every time you throw in another zero, right, and that becomes 8,000 over 4,000, right? But in other words, these little numbers start to have no meaning. It's the ratio. When the exponents are the same, it's the ratio of the coefficients. This is going to I to 2. Never going to be exactly 2 because of the 4 and the 12. But that's the end behavior on both sides. Negative divided by negative is still positive. So it's starting to shake shape a little bit. And of course, I hope you look at that and go, oh, oh, domain, I can't use negative three. Right, let's move this two over here. Uh, well, I think this is shaping up nicely. And there are no more x-intercepts. There's only one x-intercept. So it's got to look like that. All right, so what's going on here? Well, why don't we use negative 3.001? Let's put negative 3.001 in here. 001. Okay, well, that's negative 12.04. I mean, I could do that, add 12. I'm dividing by one of these negative whoo, numbers, which means it's going to fit into this lots of times. And go to infinity. That's a very quick um, butchered calculation on my part. 8x minus, uh, what, what did I have? 4 over, God, I forgot, 4x uh, plus 12. There we go. Okay, I had to look at the graph. All right, so now what are some of the questions? What is the limit of g of x as x goes to infinity? That means that as I go to infinity, like 10 to 100, to 1,000, to 10,000. As I put bigger and bigger numbers in, what's happening? We already talked about it. It's going to two. What's the limit? I'll write it here. What's the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right of g of x? Well, that means I'm plugging numbers in like a half, like 0, 
like negative one, like negative two, like negative two point nine 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 nine. Right? And if you do the math, you're gonna find out because you're also gonna plug in negative two point nine 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 here. You're gonna get a negative divided by a negative. I'm sorry, you're gonna get a negative divided by a positive. And we're heading to negative infinity. Whoa. Okay. And you're gonna to have to do this repetitively for days. But I'm gonna to have to do this a lot. I have a low battery. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna keep trying here. All right, I may have to shut this down real quick. Okay. Running out of battery. My fault. All right, so let's graph y equals, let's just talk about the range for y equals cosine x squared plus five. What's x squared doing? x squared is doing this. That's what it's doing. It's running around the circle. As you put bigger and bigger numbers in, you're going around the circle faster and faster and faster and generating what? Numbers that never get bigger than one. Never get smaller than negative one because cosine is all about widths. So I'm really looking at plus and minus one plus five. That is all this calculation is going to kick out. So what's the range? Well, the middle is five. I'm going up and down 20. The range is minus 15 to 25. And because I got no battery, I'm flying. All right, average rate of change of x squared plus 6x. The average rate of change of x squared plus 6x from what to what? Negative 1 to 3. Well, I know that thing's going up by 4. Okay, so what if I put a negative 1 in? 1 minus 6, negative 5. If I put a 3 in, 9 plus 18, 27. Sure looks like I just went up 32. So what's 32 divided by 4? 8. That's your average rate of change is 8 to 1. Algebra 1 question. That stumps kids in calculus when they first hear it. So you're going to hear it now. All right, a repeat question. 64x to the third minus 125y cubed. Okay, this is in the previous video. Can you write that in factor four? 4x minus 5y. I build the next parentheses off of this. 16x squared takes me to here. 5y times 25y squared takes me to here. What gets rid of the middle terms? The opposite of that product, which is plus 20xy. Okay, first and last were always positive. I forgot to put the square there. Rushing too much here. All right, what else we got? We got square root of x minus 5. I'm going to just do a couple of the problems that I definitely want you seeing right now. Square root of x minus 5 starts at 5. Square root looks like that. Over here we have a zero. X minus seven is gonna cut through that. I think it will. It looks like it's gonna cut through that once. Yes, over seven, up seven. Yep, so it's gonna be a small number, probably around eight or nine. All right, let's go find it. Square, X minus five equals X squared minus 14, X plus 49. Zero equals X squared minus 15, X at five, 54. 54 is a 9 and a 6, so we've got an X and a 9. And it, ooh, yeah, 9 and 6 make 15, good. 9 and 6, and they're both negative. All right, 6 is, oh, 6 is fictitious. All right, that's where it intersects at X equals 6. We have a fictitious and extraneous solution. But X equals 9 was a good guess. So let's put 9 in. 9 minus 5 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. Let's put six in. Six minus five is one, square root of one is one, but six minus seven is negative one, and one does not equal negative one. Only one answer, x equals nine. All right, rushing through here. Four plus or minus seven i. Finding ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Trying to find a quadratic that equals zero, but the answer is our x equals four plus or minus seven i. Step one, move the four. X minus four equals plus minus seven i. Step two, square. X squared minus eight x plus 16 equals positive 49 i squared. 49 i squared is minus 49. Minus 49 is gonna come to the other side. 
X squared minus 8X, 49, 59, 65. Okay, so that's that one. More practice. X cubed. Just find the point of inflection for this problem. Just so at least we can get the conversation started. Minus 6X squared plus minus 5X plus 10. All right, so a little quick look at what this looks like. Y intercept is 0, 10. Going down at 5 to 1 pretty steeply. That's adding to it, so it's even going to go down faster. It's going to go down faster, but then eventually it's going to swing back up. And there's our cube. All right, so minus B over 3A gives us this X value. All right, that is positive 6 over two, uh, 3. So that's an X value of 2. How do I find where that cuts through? I plug a 2 in. That's 8, which means that this is going to be 3 times that, 24, and subtract. Minus 5 times 2 is minus 10 plus 10. Oh, isn't that nice? All right, so this is minus 16. All right, and there's your point of inflection. And we're going down at what rate? C minus 3A H squared, HK. That's H, and that's K. So I haven't put it in graphic form for you, but C minus five, minus three, A is one, H is two squared. All right, so we got minus five, minus 12, minus 17. So the slope right here is going down at 17 to one. We'll tell you why, explain it in class. All right, so this is just to put something in your brain right now. And then I'm gonna do one more problem, although I had some that I skipped, but I do wanna do one more quick problem Let's just graph y equals 2 sine x over 3 plus 4. All right, so dot, 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 dot. There are shortcuts to what I'm doing. I'm not going to take them. All right, 2, 4, 6. All right, and I want x over 3 to equal 0, and I want x over 3 to equal 2 pi. That's one revolution. Whoa. Okay, so when does that equal 0? Zero. zero. There's one graph, one period of the sine function. Zero gets me four, and when I get back to two pi, remember height. Height goes to one to negative one, and we're in the middle, and the heights are going up in the first 90 degrees. I'm in the middle of going up first 90 degrees. And so six pi divided by three is two pi, which is the end of one revolution before you start to repeat. And six pi brings me back to four. And I hope I got time, but if that's 6 pi, then that's 3 pi. That's 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 should get a 6. Let's see how. 3 pi over 2. Okay, dividing by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by a third. Right? So what happens to the 3s? They cancel. You get pi over 2. Where is pi over 2? That's the maximum height of 1. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 4 is 6. That tells you that. Sorry for rushing like that, but I got to shut this down before it honks out. Got a little practice in. And I don't have time to do it again, so I'm going to upload it.